Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Greg. I'm going to go over the cryptocurrency market. And if you just land here, do me a few favor, drop a like, hit the subscribe button and new subscribers. I do appreciate you too. I have a little bit different outlook on the market and use a little bit different strategy. I am uh, a contrarian, if you will, right now. So here's the thing. I got the S&P 500 on the, on the screen, right? One thing that you might want to be aware of when it comes to the great financial crisis of 2008, seven and eight, and right here, you see that right there, and it did a massive drop down to 658. And everybody said it was the end of the world, of course. It's like they're saying up here, sort of, kind of like that. But here's what's interesting. If you go check the S&P 500, there were stocks, smaller cap stocks, that were already bullish before this completed its bottom. Think about that. There are already stocks that were going one, going like this. Like this. One, two, three, four, five. While this was going down okay so what i'm saying is that there's a chance that this could continue to be going down and then bitcoin could start going up sooner than this completes its bottom okay so what does that what does that actually mean here with this right here with bitcoin okay where's the peak on the s p 500 Look at that, January of 22. When was Bitcoin's peak? November of 21. How far down did Bitcoin go while this was going up? Bitcoin went down 40 or 50%. Bitcoin went down 40 or 50% before this started going down. Went down, okay? You go back and look at the history of Bitcoin and check that out. That's something you want to be aware of. So just looking at Bitcoin, it actually even though it's super high up there in the RSI, just have to wait and let this wave sequence play out. You know, um, is this one, two, three, four, five? Or is it one, two, three, four, five? Don't know yet. But it could continue to keep playing out a wave sequence. And then you have another one back here. Is that one, two, three, four, five? What about this one back here? Is this one, two, and then three, four, five? This whole sequence could be playing out and drive Bitcoin all the way back up to 22, 23,000, guys, okay? And it'll just be in there. All these waves back here might work with this wave. So you don't know. But eventually, it's going to go, go back up. And it's probably the same thing with uh, Ethereum, guys. If you take a look at it, um, you know, Ethereum more or less uh, right here, you know, is it one, two, three, four, five? And then is there this one, one, two, three, four, five? It could be. It could be. So I'm looking at, um, you know, some derivatives. I go over this to let you know that, first off, I was pretty sure that Ethereum was going to be making some pretty good, decent moves because the early warning shot on this, on this, this is Ethereum Grayscale, okay? Ethereum Grayscale, Grayscale Ethereum Trust, however you want to put that. And in my opinion, over here, it made a nice wave and it, it did a second wave correction. Okay. So now we can get an idea about what Ethereum could be doing, right? So it did a 786 retracement, a 786 retracement. Okay. So at a minimum, at a minimum, this is A, B, and then C. Okay. So you got a C wave coming over here, like so. Okay, I'll show you guys something. So Ethereum is going to be making some moves. Of course, it's going to have some corrections along the way and probably deep corrections because everybody's scared. And it's going to do something like that at a minimum. Or maybe it's going bullish and it's starting a third wave. Don't know yet. I can't say 100% that it is, but you have a good shot on this whole structure that it went up into this wave. It's corrected it. And now it's trying to attempt to make it make itself go bullish again. Okay. So now what do you do to build your confidence on the direction of Ethereum, right? 
and help you guys to build your confidence on the direction of Ethereum. So now it came down, completed this correction, and you're looking at this wave. So this is a smaller version of what I went over. This wave, it corrected 786, right? So now you want to go over to this wave, okay? So we'll go to a 45-minute chart, check this wave out. And this obviously is some sort of third wave of probably this wave. So you have one, two, and then it's going to be completing the third wave like so, guys. So you could take the uh, your wave pattern like so, and then maybe something like that, back down for a four, take about as much time as that, and it'll come back up for a five, okay? So that's something in this area that's going to be going on with a grayscale Ethereum trust. And then it's going to come down and correct, okay? And then... You're going to take it and be checking the retrace wherever it ends up and checking the retrace of 618 or 786 to see if it's going to be getting out of there. If this is going to be a wave one and this is going to be a wave two, and it'll be going into a three, a potential three of a three or a C wave. We don't know yet. Okay. What am I going to say that it's going to be what it's doing? Here at the corrected it, it ended up over here. I think that this is attempting to go bullish. And as time goes on with this asset where the Fed is going to be raising rates, more bad news, so it's going to go up a little bit, right? So think about this. Think about this. Let's kind of time this with the market, which I don't like to do. I don't like to use the media when it comes to charts, okay? So right now it's December, uh, October 26, 2022. Third wave, come back down to a fourth and maybe complete this fifth wave. Or maybe complete this whole sequence possibly by November 2nd or November 3rd, or maybe sometime later in the week after the Fed speaks, and then it's going to have a dump, right? And that's what the media is going to say, or people on crypto Twitter are going to be like, see, here you go, told you so, you guys, bear market is back, right? That's probably how it's going to go. So you just keep an eye on your assets, the stuff you want to be checking out with uh, these things, and you keep going over it. So... What does that mean for, I go back over here, back over to Ethereum, okay? I'm going to go back over to Ethereum, and more or less, it's going to be basically the same thing, okay? And uh, Ethereum, the grayscale Ethereum is the first one out of it. So here's Ethereum, did its move, corrected back over here. Now it's trying to attempt to do something, and it's going to go up maybe a little bit more. It might even hit 1,600 plus, who knows? And it's going to come back around, and it's going to correct that. And crypto Twitter and the rest of the market is going to say, see, I told you so. Okay, you have to remember something, um, guys. Wave twos can be extremely deep. They can be extremely deep. So don't be surprised. Just a second, let me clean this up. Don't be surprised if you see a wave up here, like so. You see a wave just like so here at LA. Let's say it gets up there to 1630. And it comes all the way back down into this area again, right? To to just finally get out of there. So especially with the macro environment right now, I'm going to expect deeper, deeper corrections just because of that to really scare people. Remember, these waves, for those that are new to my channel, I use Elliott waves, not necessarily to trade. Where's the best place? Where is the best place to pick up an asset? Where's the best place to pick up? Right here. Wave twos. I'm, uh, I'm looking for Elliott waves. I'm looking for bottom of wave twos. Okay. There's a good example of that. I could show you right now that I believe that something is right there like that. Okay. As an example, as an example, here's an asset that I've shown to you up on a wave and corrected all the way back down to the bottom of the wave. Okay. And knowing how I understand Elliott waves. This is an example using Elliott waves. Can it change and drop? It could, but this is the area where nobody believes it. It's just too, too close for most people's comfort, but that's what wave twos like to do. It's like here with Ethereum. So you want to pick it up right here and it's the same thing going down. Okay. There's great examples of this too. Come down a wave one and going to retrace in wave two, come back down just like so. Where do you pick it up on a short? Those are the prime, prime spots. So that's what I use Elliott Ways for, for the more or less, and get a general direction of where an asset is going to be going. So it's going to be basically the same thing for Bitcoin, okay? 
for Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin is probably going to be wandering around in this area a little bit. It might make it up to, oh, I don't know. It's going to just depend on how this sequence plays out with Bitcoins, guys. It could be 21. It might even pop up to 22, possibly, okay? Even with the high in the RSI like that, okay? Just It has to play out that wave sequence. Don't know for sure if this is a 1-2. It certainly looks like it, okay? So this can come up for a 3, and it could have a long, drawn-out 4, and then finally come up for a 2. See how long, how long did this take? That's from 14 October to 21, so one week. So 1-2, so like so. This could be a sequence that's going to play out. One, two, so maybe a three, right? And then have it drawn out four, and then go up for a five, something like that, okay? Just not going to know until it plays out. And then what's going to happen is Bitcoin is going to correct that sequence, right? And it's going to come back down again, possibly. And then, you know, all the uh, negative, negative bears are going to be coming out. Not to say that they're negative, but... You know, I think it's time to kind of like be a little bit more, um, what's the word, reasonable when it comes to Bitcoin right now, okay? Like I said, I was a bear on Bitcoin when it was going down. I was a bear when Bitcoin was going down, guys. You know, I remember telling people to short Phantom at $1.30. Look at Phantom right now. It's $1.30. I said, this is what I told them. I said, Go in there, put on 5X leverage, and just write it down on Phantom, on Solana, on Kusama, on XMR, okay? And just let it write it down. And then right here, when it got to here, I flipped, and I became more bullish, okay? I was kind of hoping that Bitcoin would come back down here in another way, but never did it. It never did it. I was waiting for it. It never did it. And now it went up on this, and now we're over here, okay? So... And then looking at the other cryptos, I will go over some other cryptos, but this is not the time probably to be buying cryptos, guys. Let them run, okay? Let them run and go find opportunities, which cryptos are doing well during the uh, the pump. And when it makes a correction, Bitcoin makes a, does a correction, which cryptos are doing well, okay? Kind of like uh, Luxo here, where... If you entered in at 450, you've already made a 2x, okay? And checking out other uh, how Quant is doing, how the other cryptos that are doing really well and during this uh, pump. And also, how is it going to do during the correction? Here's another one that uh, is looking out. It's turning out to be pretty decent so far. I am skeptical. So here's one I entered into here at $1.40. And writing that up, I am definitely skeptical of that um, move, but it could have been the bottom. I decided to take it. Okay, let's go. Let's go, flow. Boom. And see, the issue I have is this over here. You know, what exactly is that? It looks definitely looks like one, two, three, four, five with a fifth wave blow off. And this looks three wave-ish to me. So one, two. And that was the bet I was willing to take. That's why I use Elliott Waves for, guys, right here like this. I was willing to take that bet right here. That's where you want to go because you want to ride that up. Potentially. I'm not saying that it is. No guarantees. Just the potential to do it. Okay? And the other reason, too, is that some guys get really, really focused on one crypto. Um, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that because that one crypto might not go anywhere or just might turn south. It might not work out for you. Um, I don't agree with that. You want to be probably in a variety of cryptos, um, you know, not a whole bunch. I wouldn't do 20 cryptos, but let's say four, five, six. I'm probably at eight or nine right now, okay? And then you can start uh, managing your portfolio in a way and go, oh, okay, this is the one that looks like it's going to be doing. But don't chase pumps. Don't chase pumps right now, guys. It's not a good idea to chase pumps. While this is all pumping, um, like I said in my previous videos, you should have been setting yourself up. Like I was telling people, set yourself up for the coming pump, okay? It's very, very difficult to do to find these before they pump, um, especially now since everybody thinks stuff is going to be going down. Lido Dow is another one. I think Lido's done right there. And it's coming up to complete that. You'll have another opportunity with Lido come down and do a correction. And then get back into it again and you can reload up. 
I think Lido is going to be a pretty good performer in this next little wave run. Now, I'm not saying that Lido's doing a one-two. More than likely, Lido's doing an ABC. You want to be aware of that with Lido, guys. Lido's Lido's going to be bullish, but it's going to be bullish in a wave like that. Okay. So this is definitely going to be a coin you're going to want. If it does a move way up there, this is one you're going to want to be out of. And that's the bet I'm willing to take. Because why? You have a nice five wave. There's no doubt in my mind that this is an impulsive move. If there's an impulsive move right here and it corrects it, there's going to be another one over here. I don't care what the media says. Now, can it break a sequence? It can. It has to be very devastating. As an example, let's say something happens with what's going on over in Ukraine and Russia. Really, really bad. As an example, don't want to say it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. That could break a sequence and change things. But typically, the sequences usually play out. They usually play out. Your odds are going, okay, it's going to do this five, three, five. More than likely, it's better to realize that the sequences 90% plus of the time I don't know what the numbers are. They're going to play the sequences out. All right, guys, that's the end of my video. If you made it all the way to the end, do me a huge favor. Drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Peace.